People on Long Island say Florida, not Florida. And a lot of them go there when they get older because there are no taxes, at least federal taxes, and things are cheaper. Ah, but in Florida, something's about to go up. Arthi Swaminathan is covering the referendum that's going to raise the minimum wage. Good to have you here. And how long do they have to wait in Florida for it to go up? <laughs> that is so funny. They have to wait six years, but it does go up and it goes up to $15. And that is really something because Florida is among um, eight other states and D.C. to actually bring the uh, minimum wage up to $15. And, you know, if you can, can put up the map, um, New York, California, Virginia, it's a really interesting cohort that they are part of. And this is not overnight. As mentioned, this is going to take six years for them to reach it. The first increase is going to be from $8.56 to $10. And that's effective next September. The interesting part is all these states together, they constitute 43% of the U.S. labor force. And Florida is really even more interesting because they went with, you know, they have a sort of Republican leaning. So at the same time, I guess people are really, really feeling the pain for them to respond in, in this way. Leisure and hospitality down 18.7% as of September. Overall, unemployment is not too bad as compared to other states, but still pretty bad, 7.6%. So the calculation here is really... Um, who is this going to hurt more? Is this going to hurt the small businesses more? Or is it going to hurt um, the people more? It seems like the people have taken a vote to make their stand known. Yeah, already, I want to ask you a little bit more about that because when you look at Florida, you're exactly right. A lot of times you think about travel, you think about the hospitality industry. Disney obviously located there, employs thousands and thousands and thousands of workers. What's the potential backlash here for that? Has there been any modeling done just in terms of the possibility of jobs that could be lost as a result of this? Yeah, so this is the, the cost benefit analysis comes here, right? So we don't know previous hikes, how they kind of played out. When we went to 370, 325, which is the current minimum wage, hasn't changed since 2009. There wasn't really a big um, impact on businesses. And economists are saying they're going to be ripple effects. But this is really an interesting scenario with COVID. We don't really know how hurt small businesses are going to be. So at this point, we just have to sort of wait and see. But previous studies of previous hikes have shown that it doesn't really have a huge impact on, on businesses and people sort of see their incomes rise. So this could be sort of net gain for all parties. 